Hey guys, Ryan here. In today's video, I'm going to help you guys learn how to rotate better. And we're pretty much just going to hop right into it. And the very first thing we're going to talk about is this nifty little rule I have. And that's stop waiting and start rotating. I made a video on this entire topic, so I'm going to kind of keep this part short. And the whole point is, when I watch a lot of people, they land, they get their load out, and then they'll just sit in some random place doing nothing but just waiting. They're waiting for something to happen. They aren't rotating early. They aren't putting themselves in a good position. And that's why they're not winning as many games as they truly like. I think an easier way to remember it is this. The early bird gets the win. I know I have a bunch of cheesy sayings, but the whole point of them is to help people actually remember what I'm saying. And it actually makes it easier to recall what I'm saying when you're playing when it's in a nice little saying like that. This is one of the key things I wish people understood and whether you're playing for wins or kills, the earlier you rotate, the better off you're going to be almost every single time. It doesn't matter if it's end game, it doesn't matter if it's in the beginning of the game, rotating early is almost always the better play. And this actually plays directly into my second topic and that's you need to risk it to get the biscuit. Now if you just rolled your eyes at the fact that I have another saying for this, I wouldn't blame you. But what I'm trying to get across is you sometimes have to make risky plays if you actually want to win the game. I know sometimes when it's the late game and you need to push across that open field and you're sitting behind that only piece of cover that's keeping you safe and you sometimes just don't want to leave even though you know you need to if you really want to win. I, we've all been there, but guess what, guys? That's not going to win you the game. What's going to happen is the circle is going to start pushing you and now you're going to have nowhere to go. Everyone's going to be looking towards the edges of the circle and you're just going to be a free kill. If you just start pushing earlier and actually start making the risky rotations earlier in the circle when you think you can make them safely, that's going to up your chances of actually winning the game and actually up your chances of surviving those rotations. There is no such thing as a guaranteed rotation. There are too many variables, there are too many people on this map, there are too many things to calculate. However, the earlier you rotate, the better off you are in terms of your odds of survival. As I said before, there's no such thing as a guaranteed rotation, but what I've noticed is the earlier I rotate, that usually means the less people rotating with me, that means the less people looking at the usual rotation paths, and that means I'm able to get a power position before most people have even thought about rotating into that position. So many people do not rotate until the circle forces them in the circle. And by doing this, that means if you have to make a crazy run across some open area that doesn't have a lot of cover, or if you know there's a lot of squads nearby, this is where it becomes an issue. By waiting so long, by waiting for everyone to start rotating with you, you're putting yourself in a bad situation and you're just asking to be killed by everyone because they're going to be rotating with you or they're just going to be getting free kills on the people rotating in. It's either you're going to be the person sitting at the edge of the circle shooting people walking in or you're going to be the person getting shot trying to get in the edge of the circle. Either way, the earlier you rotate and the earlier you make riskier rotations, the better off you're going to be in the long run, the better off you're going to be in the short run, and you're going to just end up winning more games right now if you hopped on today, but you're also going to win more games by embracing this in the long term as well. But moving on from there, the third thing we're going to talk about in this video is learn to rotate for kills and for wins. The reason I want to talk about this is because the play styles of people who are focused on high kill games and the play styles of people who are focused on wins are very different and I'd highly recommend at least just learning the basics of both because it's only going to make you a better player, but it's going to make you more aware of how other people play. And this is going to make your rotations even better. And it's just going to make you a better player overall. For example, I'm someone who mainly plays for kills. So when I switch to playing primarily for wins, one thing I notice is the power positions you most likely are going to find people camping in and how to counter them. When I'm just out there pushing for kills, those are the people that are usually going to kill me, and those are the people that I have to worry about the most. I can win a close range gunfight against the vast majority of people. However, when someone has a power position, they're holed up with claymores and mines or something like that. How can I push them? How can I actually get to that point where I can push them safely? And how do I win the gunfights? And on the flip side, if you're someone who only plays for wins and you don't really care about how many kills you have, by playing more aggressive, 
you learn to avoid aggressive players because you learn where those guys land, you learn how they rotate, and you learn the signs that a sweaty player is nearby. When you hear that UAV is overhead, whatever their call out is, you know, there's a terrible impersonation. Whenever you hear that, you now know I'm probably appearing on the minimap if I don't have Ghost, and I better be moving even if I have Ghost. This is the time, if you don't have Ghost, to post up, get in a power position, let them play into you, and win the gunfight by using your smarts and good positioning. By being a smarter player and changing your playstyle to be that of a more aggressive player, you're going to learn more about the people who are most likely going to end your game. And this is going to lead me into my last topic I'm going to touch on. And this is that all of these topics are going to be applicable in Warzone 2, and that's why I want to talk about them. I know it seems crazy for me to keep talking about Warzone 2 so much, but we're only two months away from the release of Warzone 2. Well, a little more than two months. But the point I'm trying to make is, this is the end of Warzone 1. Warzone 2 is just on the horizon. So as much as I want to make coaching videos that are focused primarily on Warzone 1, I also want to make videos that are going to help people get better in Warzone 2 and pretty much any Battle Royale game they play. That's the whole point of videos like this. Everything I just talked about in this video, you can apply it to essentially any battle royale and it's going to help you. Anyways guys, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for supporting the channel like always. I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I can't wait for Warzone 2. And I hope all of you guys have been commenting, liking, and watching these videos. I hope to see you in Warzone 2. It's been Ryan. I hope you have a good day. Pretty sure I already said that. Peace.